Then the question is, what stock should you buy puts on? Well, I'm going to give you an example. I'm not going to say to buy puts on this name, but I'm going to give you an example. I want you to look at DraftKings. So JP Morgan, yes, they downgraded DraftKings from neutral to underweight. It was yesterday. So JP Morgan had this neutral rating on DraftKings since December 2020 where the company IPO'd. Went about $50. Now it's at 15 And again, the neutral rating they held all the way down. And now they're telling you with the stock down 70%, JP Morgan's saying, telling their clients to, to sell it. Underweight. Now, I'm not picking on JP Morgan here since yeah, you know, we all get it wrong from time to time. The bigger takeaway from this is just because the stock is down 50% plus, like we're seeing in most tech names, we're seeing in meme stocks, some biotechs, I mean, the aggressive growth names, just because they're down 50% plus doesn't mean you should bottom fish. And I hear that on TV. Well, this is a blue cap name and you know, blue chip. And we, we, we're going to buy it and you know, long term will be fine, whatever. Okay, you said that about Disney at 140, 120, 110, it's 95, and they still don't have a bus- working business model. They still have a working business model. I mean, streaming doesn't work for them. They need to sell that whole Hulu stake. Forget about buying the, the remainder of it, which I don't know where you're going to get the money from. Just sell it. Put $20 billion on your balance sheet. Anyway, I covered Disney. Dial down streaming. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible business that you can't compete with anyone else since you can't put your best content immediately on that platform. It's got to go in the movies first. It means you can't compete with Netflix. You can't compete with HBO. You can't, you know, House of Dragons is out. New Shack series is out for HBO. You can't get that anyplace else other than HBO. You can't get some of these things. Ozarks, uh, Netflix. Yet I can see all this stuff in the movies for Disney. It's not a working business model. But be careful. Because when you're looking at names, especially DraftKings, it, it's a roll-up. I mean, it, there's a company that takes out a lot of debt and uses its stock to acquire smaller competitors to build a bigger, bigger entity. And it's a good strategy in low interest rate bull markets in this type of environment. However, if you look at the DraftKings, their share count increased by 22% since its IPO. Okay, I said in December, you had to wait a month or two I don't know if it's 36 days before all the investment bankers who helped this company raise money in its IPO could cover it. But the official date, I think it was October 2021 IPO. So December, November, December is when all these firms come out and a lot of them have buy ratings or whatever, but they can't cover it until like, you know, until this training for, I think it's either 30 or 60 days. But we're talking about not that long ago. It was a company that came out with 350 million shares and now they have 426 million shares. That is a massive increase in their share count. Massive. And you say dilution. Why is that a big deal? Let me. Ex- I like to explain things, right? Because people just shout out terms. Dilution, dilution. What the hell is dilution? If you're a social network, you understood dilution with you know, Zuckerberg's partner. How he got wrecked. So if your stock is trading at $10, right? And, and 10 years from now, it's still $10. You could say, wow, I, I didn't generate anything. And the stock is flat on the year. Well, it's flat. However, the company could have a $100 million market cap today. But if they double their share count by buying companies or whatever... And they get warrants, they get exercise, whatever. That share count increased. That stock, again, it's still a 10, but it has a market cap of 200 million instead of 100 million. So your shares just got significantly diluted. And now that company has to generate twice the earnings to support its valuation. And this is common with mining stocks that don't generate money. What are they going to do? They're going to build it up. They're going to use their stock and, and constantly. You'll see, st- I've seen stocks that come out with a $50 million market cap and they're at a dollar and they're at a dollar 25 and they literally have a billion dollar market cap a few years later. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> you know, I mean, they sell a company for 2 billion. That's pretty good for the owners and stuff like that. They made a lot of money, but as a shareholder, you sell a company for, for, you know, a billion dollars and you made, you know, 25 cents. <laughs> yeah, it's a big difference when you're a share. That's dilution. I know, you know, people don't explain that to you, but it's a terrible thing. Dilution. It's not the worst thing if you're using your stock to buy assets that you believe are going to be worth a lot, lot more. And Oracle has done this. You've seen, I think it was AutoZone or other companies, uh, Wayne Hazenga. The model works sometimes. It's very difficult, but you also see it fall on its face. But it only works in, in environments where, you, where there's super growth environments, which we don't have. Because now you have DraftKings, who's sitting on $1.3 billion in cash, but also has $1.3 billion in long-term debt. So that's a wash. 
None of their debt is variable. Remember I said that, I'm going to come back to it. Okay, variable means that your interest, your payments are going to rise as interest rates rise. So that's a good thing. Thank God for them. But we're going to talk about variable a little bit. However, DraftKings spends money like just throwing it out there. I mean, you don't see companies spend as much money as this company. Just look at almost any commercial on ESPN. You look anywhere. I mean, the commercials that they have and the people that have doing the commercials. You look on TNT. They have. Co- I mean, these guys are actually telling you what. Remember when betting was like, you know, frowned upon in sports? We don't want to see that ever. Now, you, know, you make money, they all embrace it. There's advertising everywhere in this industry, right? They don't care. Nobody cares. They only care about money. They care about their bottom line. When it comes to politics and companies, that's it. They're going to support the agenda that makes them the most money. That's what they do. But it's funny how that narrative has changed so much where, no, you know, be careful. Gambling's bad. Now it's like, no, no, no. They have free, you know, and Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith, the TNT, like saying, hey, I like this, you know, these guys. I think this is great to buy this guy, do this guy, and, you know, fantasy, whatever. It's crazy. But if you look at DraftKings, the money they're spending, they're going to generate probably $1.8 billion in sales in 2022, but they're, they're going to spend over $2 billion this year. And they're losing a shitload of money. Projected to lose $1.4 billion in EBITDA. Again, earnings before interest tax appreciate. That, 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 that's the number you, you use. is much better than earnings, but it's more pure. But that's a lot of money. <laughs> Plus, the company has contractual obligations of more than $800 million over the next two years. I don't know what those contractual obligations exactly are, but we know that they have to make $800 million in payments with $1.3 billion over the next two years. I mean, they're massive. So you're like, you know, are they generating tons of free cash flow? No. Free cash flow is projected to be negative 840 this year and close to negative 600 million next year. I know I'm throwing numbers at you, but it's important. I'm trying to help you guys out because it's a fundamental market. You have to look at balance sheets now. You have to look at debt and you have to look at growth because growth's going to slow significantly. And a lot of companies are still trading on the growth that they're expected to see over the next two to three years. So please pay attention. I'm not going to throw too many numbers at you in confusion. You're going to fall asleep while you're driving your car working out. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for you to make a shitload of money. But now if you look at DraftKings, it comes at a time where we could see gambling slow the next few years. As interest rates go higher, the Fed's removing liquidity from the market, everyone's bills are higher, so much less discretionary spending. You have gambles of speculators where a lot of these people probably to meme stocks and crazy shitty cryptos and and got killed. I know what you're thinking. I'm going to stop you before you go crazy because people say, gambling is a great sector during recession every time. Just like other advice things like cigarettes and alcohol, they hold up. That's great. But reality. I can't see people having more money to spend gambling in 2023 than they did over the past two to three years. Can you? I mean, if they are gambling, right, the amount that they're gambling, and you could call that cart value, which is called retail or whatever, like it, it dominoes the reason why a company exploded is because their cart value was $9, and they, it, it was, I think it was $5, their cart value, the average money that someone spends, and their cart value went to like $22 because they offered a, a ton of things when you go there and you get... Yeah, you know, whatever. If you want salads, if you want bowls, if you want, you know, much more than pizza or, you know, the, the desserts are awesome. The lava cakes, I'm not speaking from experience. The lava cakes are awesome and uh, those chocolate chip brownie. <laughs> but, you know, you wind up going there and say, all right, I'll take this. I'll take that. I'll take that. It's carb value. The bigger the carb value, the better it is, right? So, you know, you're looking at how much they're spending. It's probably going to be much lower on a per bet basis. I mean, you have to figure that out. DraftKings also has a, a lot of competition in the marketplace. Caesars, Las Vegas Sands, MGM, Win. These guys have strong balance sheets. These are big guys. They're off in their own online gambling sites now, have a, a, a much stronger balance sheet since they're generating tons of free cash flow through their casinos, real casinos. They also have pen in that industry. And to support the insane spending, especially on ads, lobbying, which is incredibly important in this industry, lobbying, they're going to have to take on more debt. And you know how expensive debt is now compared to it was the past couple of years? So what's my point here when it comes to DraftKings? It's much bigger than DraftKings. I'm just bring it up, and it's come down a lot. The balance sheet is okay. It could come down further. It's likely going to come down further. You're just spending way too much money, not expected to generate money in a long time. But if you're... Buying puts or betting against a stock over the next nine months, you have to start looking at balance sheets. You have to start looking at growth potential. 
if you have a weak balance sheet and your model is set up to where you're supposed to see incredible, incredible growth in the next three to five years, chances are that stock is a great short. Or great, or you know, betting that it's going to go lower. You have to short it. I wouldn't recommend that for individual investors ever, especially with a market crazy as it is today. We we could see you know fifteen percent declines and a six percent rise in one day. And the Nasdaq, it's crazy to play those kind. But but you avoid a lot of that part if you're buying long dated puts. So you have to be very very careful bottom fishing here. You look at DraftKings down seventy percent, going, "Wow, man, DraftKings, I like it." You have to look at the numbers. And the case of JFK, even with the stock down 70% from its highs, it, it's still crazy expensive. When are they going to make money? They're not projected, the analysts, until 2026. Get negative free cash flow. But the name that doesn't fit in the environment we're going to see in 2023 and 2024, which is much higher interest rates, or you know, much higher than they were in the past, that they're going to raise a lot further from here. Hopefully we don't. We're four percent. Maybe go to four point five to five percent. We're supposed to peak at, but five percent is a lot higher than zero was for most of the past twelve years. This name doesn't fit in the environment, not just because of that, but with the Fed shrinking its balance sheet and taking liquidity out of the market. So the roll-up model, where you take on huge debt, dilute the crap out of your stock, spend a shitload of money, is a model fully dependent on growth. Growth that. Where is it coming from? Tell me. Please tell me. I do this for a long time. I have no idea where the growth's coming from next year. It's not coming from the Fed. It's definitely not coming from China. Holy shit. But where will it come from? Say, so, well, gambling. Most, most states that were pro online gambling already approved gambling. And those that haven't are likely not going to. And DraftKings is available in most states. There's only 10 where it's not available. And that's probably for its fantasy. There's a few more that it's not available when it comes to the actual online gambling, when it comes to you know, betting games, not just, you know, fantasy. Because that fantasy part is legal in Florida, but we can't use DraftKings to Florida State where they don't provide online gambling. It's crazy. You can bet on horses. You can bet on anything. You could drive while you're looking at your phone here. Don't have to put your blinkers on. But don't do anything. Don't online gambling. No way. Can't do it. <laughs> anyway, smoke pot in a lot of places, but just don't. Not online gambling. We're not going to allow it. Just crazy. But where's the growth coming from? See, when more states are going to prove, not really. Consumers are coming back spending. DraftKings doesn't have pricing power, right? And it's, it's, there's a ton of competitors, online gambling sites, almost a commoditized business where if DraftKings takes more of the rake, I'd go someplace else to bet the football game and play fantasy football someplace else. Why do I need DraftKings? So seriously, not sure where the growth's going to come from. So where am I going with all of this? All this nonsense I just threw at you. Where am I going with it? There's a point. I'm just giving you... I like to bring up an example. I'll tell you to go buy puts on DraftKings. It's down a lot. I think it's going to come lower. I think there's much better, better plays that you can make a fortune on that are going to... Earnings are going to come down significantly. And now when you're seeing underweight ratings with JP Morgan, you know, you're seeing like... You're looking at stocks down 50 60%, even like Disney, where nobody downgraded the stock. Who's downgrading Disney? Nobody. This expectation is still sky high. People are still telling you, it's Disney. It's going to come back. Iger. He's great. Is it? What is he going to do to make it come back? I mean, this guy can't wave that magic Disney wand and everything's going to be good. Now, you have serious problems, serious debt problems. It's a broken company. Do I think he could fix it? Yes. Go back to storytelling. Go back to, to, you know, make sure you have a tight cost structure. That takes a long time. You got to rethink your streaming business because you're losing billions, billions, and billions. And now the one metric that everyone relied on is going to continue to go lower because people are not going to pay for that service. They're not going to pay higher prices and ads for a service they really don't like in the first place. Sorry. We got all these people. They don't want to pay for the site. So what are we going to do? Let's throw ads on it and let's raise the price. <laughs> what? That's the solution? Okay, good luck. You have to offer more. You have to come up with new content, which unfortunately costs tens of billions. They expect for $30 billion. But this is where you look at companies where DraftKings, there's a lot of negativity on it. It was a SPAC. It, all this, you know, a lot could be factored in. Maybe it comes down a little bit more. There's a lot of stocks down 56% that come down much, much, much further. Where expectations are very, very high and earnings estimates are very, very, very high still. So fundamentally, this is where I'm going with this. Start doing your research. I know it's the holiday season, but you want to make a fortune. This is what great investors do. 
Sometimes when people are going out and hanging out and being like, oh, that's fine. I'm not telling you not to do that. Spend time with your family, hang out. Your kid's going to be off school, going on a little vacation or whatever. But the people who are making money, do your research now. Screen for companies that have lots of debt, the most debt in the industry, net debt. Net debt. And look, compare it to cash flow. Everybody destroyed AT&T, all $30 billion in debt before, you know, they spun off Time Warner. I mean, their free cash flow they were generating were like, you know, $10, 15000000000 billion in free cash flow. You got to factor that in. So, yes, a lot of debt, but when you're looking at companies that have a lot of debt, but they're not generating free cash flow, how do they pay for that debt? They got to take out more debt and more debt, which is much more expensive. Is that debt variable? Try to figure that out. You might have to do a little digging. I could figure it out pretty easy through my systems. But that's what I'm doing. I'm doing search to see which companies have variable debt, which is most small businesses. Look at small caps that aren't generating a lot of the S&P, a lot of the, the Russell 2000 companies. A lot of those aren't expected to generate earnings over the next couple of years. But those are the companies you need to avoid. Avoid all the companies that are not expected to generate money over the next couple of years. And there's a lot of those. And those companies have a lot of debt. Again, look if it's variable. If it's variable, that means as those payments are starting to go much, much higher in a market where you've seen demand fall off a cliff. And if you don't have pricing power, what do you do? Now you're talking bankruptcy. But there are a lot of companies like this, a lot. And that's why it's dangerous. I can't predict where the market's going to go. I do know that earnings are going to come down significantly. I know a lot of crazy tech companies fit this profile because they decided to sacrifice profits for subscriber growth. That's what everybody wanted to see. I need to see subscriber growth. Work for Disney. Just I don't care if you're making money on it. I just need to see it. Holy shit, you have more subscribers than any 200 million, 150. That's going to 200 million subscribers. If you're giving this shit away for free, numbers eventually matter. Especially when you're sitting on the highest net position, net debt position in, in your company's history for Disney. It matters. These numbers matter in a high interest rate environment. And you have to be willing to adapt. You have to adapt to the market conditions. You can't be stubborn in your ways. And I see it with gold. People recommend gold since the 70s. The same exact thesis for today. I see it with technology companies. I see it with growth companies. Oh, they just buy them as they go low. Just buy them as they go lower. That worked for 12 years when interest rates are 0%. And the Fed constantly flooding the money with cash and buying bonds. That's not there now. And it's not going to be there for several years. It's a market that anyone who's been doing this for just 10 years has never seen before. You have to be willing to adapt. You have to look at the numbers. In any company that's forecasted to see 20% plus in earnings growth over the next two years, probably the easiest shorts. That's not going to happen. 